everyone. Welcome back to FractalU.com. Today um, we're going to be talking about FlameInMind.com, biofeedback and addiction, and treating addiction especially with young people. Uh, hi, I'm Dan Winter, most of you know me, and I'm seated here with Cezanne Parson. Is that right, Cezanne? Yes, yeah, that's correct. Yes. And Cezanne is from Amsterdam, actually, and Cezanne has a story to tell, which we're going to tell in a minute, which is really his own personal experience of the difficulties of living in Amsterdam as a young person and how you tend to get sucked into all these messy, addictive, yes, yes. And, and so we want to uh, really try to serve those young people who are now really ready to understand that there is a way out. And I really admire Cezanne for his dedication to trying to make that happen, and we're here to help. So first, a little bit about the science. The science is that you know, my background, of course, I've been doing biofeedback for many years, and we invented flameinmind.com, our brainwave biofeedback with Patrick Botti in Belgium, our genius programmer. And um, I have been learning about the physics of addiction and understanding the model for many years. Uh, basically, I started with a very famous uh, biofeedback engineer named Marty Wootke, wootkeinstitute.com, W-U-T-T-K-E Institute. And he actually... Um, was able to treat his own addiction with brainwave biofeedback and then later uh, proved in the literature that brainwave biofeedback was more sustainable than other addiction approaches, methadone and clinics, etc. Uh, and we want to understand why that's so. But first, before we do that, I think we should go back over to Cezanne here. And do you want to just tell him a little bit about your story and how you became, got involved and now what your <laughs> dedication is to solve the problem? Yes, of course. Uh, I'm uh, Cezanne Parson, 30 years old, uh, living in Amsterdam. Um, still six months ago, I did drugs uh, recently, every weekend uh, with friends. Uh, six months ago, I went into depression. Uh, I was uh, just getting away from all my problems uh, doing the drugs. Um, and uh, it's in Amsterdam, it's in every corner. It's uh, really, uh, really uh, uh, easy to get the drugs and I see uh, the example, I see the people are giving it over to the next generation. Uh, for me, it started when I was 25 years old. Uh, I started uh, doing uh, drugs, heavily uh, cocaine I started and it got more to GHB, uh, ketamine and uh, uh, not heroin, not crack. and uh, and. Six months ago, I went into uh, di to a depression and burnout, and uh, that's when I changed my life. Uh, I saw, um, I, I, I started meditating, and I started eating vegan, and I started uh, to going on an eco farm, and uh, re redefined, re found myself. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, re found myself, um, and I want to help uh, also uh, the people. Uh, to refine themselves. Uh, that's, that's so powerful, and you say that really from the heart. And yes. I appreciate your coming here and doing this work. And just further, do you want to tell the little, do you mind, I know it's very personal, but the little short story about the sort of the day when you had that vision, which somehow you knew you had to stop? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, it's um, when I was 30, it was my 30th birthday, uh, before. Uh, the weekends before, I had flashes before my eyes uh, while doing drugs uh, from my mom, my dad, broke up uh, the traumatic experience from when I was uh, younger, three years old. And um, uh, after my 30th birthday, I uh, sat down and partied doing drugs and a flash came before my eyes. Uh, the traumatic experience was... Uh, made me do the drugs and the drinking and every, everything. Abuse. 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 I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Yes. And was, uh, yeah, sexual abuse by my own cousin. He, he was 14 at the time. I was 8, but it was for me hard. Um, yeah, and after I saw that in front of my face, I stared full unbelief and I said it to a friend of mine for the first time. And we went on partying and I saw the drinking, and I saw the liquor and the drugs and the cigarettes on the table and I saw somebody fainting and I saw somebody who was knocked out by the drugs and it was like an energy, God, 
It was like the inner vision was showing you wow. somehow, yes. even maybe ancestral memory or ancestral ancestors coming to you in the inner vision, showing you that if you stayed on that path, yes, that uh, so something perhaps maybe we need to thank your ancestors yes. for showing you that day that you would have died if you had stayed on that path, basically. Yes. Yeah. So you that you you took that to heart and you somebody else sort of gave you some feedback and you realized it was real and you needed yes yes. And so then we met Cezanne at this beautiful community near here called uh, uh, Mamante, yeah. uh, Serra Longa, Ser Serra Longa. In Serra Longa, beautiful community up in the hills. And, and he told me his story of why now he's really determined to go back and, and start also a community resort there for people who are also in, uh, yeah, in depression, uh, addiction, uh, who just want to get out of the environment they're in right now. To do something about it yeah. and to really bring that to young people. And I know for myself, my inner guides are telling me, you know, your job is to teach the young people. So <laughs> here we are doing our homework for, the, for our ancestral memory, saying, do your job. And so, so then um, I would just then share a little bit about my experience with treating addiction, what I've learned about what the science may be uh, in the simplest possible terms. So then I'm going to tell my little story about what the, the day I really got excited about working with addiction yes. and biofeedback, which is what became flameandmind.com. So we'll tell that story, and then we're going to do a pause, and we're going to turn on the toys. But first, that story. So that story is me. I remember, I was doing graduate psychophysiology at University of Detroit, and uh, I was electrical engineering, and I was building the polygraph preamplifiers. We did the first study, GSR, uh, and six or seven variable biofeedback uh, Albert Axe was my teacher, one of the inventors of biofeedback, also worked with Alan Green and others. And uh, so we were the first laboratory to document and electrically measure the difference between fear and anger in electrical terms. And I'm an electrical engineer and I thought it was cool. You could tell which college student you showed Playboy magazine to by watching their GSR, their yes. Gavinic in response. Because what happened is the electrical resistance between the two fingers called GSR, like if I galvanic skin response or galvanic skin resistance, that resistance would dramatically go down if you showed the young college student Playboy magazine. Well, hello, whoa. it was like, it was the fastest electrical switch I had ever seen. <laughs> so what was switching inside the body? The body was becoming inviting an experience and lower resistance. So that's a metaphor here that, in effect, when you are able to relax, your resistance goes down and the palmar sweating, which is what vasodilation, which uh, the ability to unpack the blood to the skin, is what switched so rapidly. For the same reason that your skin turns pink when you want your lover to touch you. It's a very simple physics, that, you know, whereas if your skin turns cold, you know, the, the, if you, and, and when your lover touches you, you know your lover doesn't really like you because the blood doesn't come to the surface, yes. and the blood doesn't lie. <laughs> So here, that's one little vignette. And then the next experience that's relevant here is we were, I, my teacher for biofeedback, as I mentioned, Marty Woodkey, uh, had a lab in Georgia at the time, and I was in Atlanta for a while. And he actually showed me this, and this is what I want to explain briefly, about the key thing we're going to do with biofeedback regarding addiction. And the key thing basically is very simple. It's called brainwave alpha. You know what brainwave alpha is? You got these brainwaves, and when you're coherent and focused and you have bliss, and your brainwaves get very ordered, and flameinmind.com is a beautiful way to display that. Well, alpha is the part of your brainwaves that's in the frequencies between about, oh, 7 and 12 hertz, or 6 or 12 hertz, roughly. And the center of that is around 8 hertz, which happens to be the Schumann resonance. So literally, you're in training with the planet. It's very important, and also it happens that the Frequency series, it's a series of harmonics that are contained in the Schumann resonance from 2 up to 30 hertz or so, that that harmonic cascade is actually fits the physics of the equation origin of biological neg entropy, exact golden ratio powers times Planck, because that's charge implosion. That's how the phase conjugation goes right down to Planck level and achieves distribution through Planck ancestral memory, which is what yes. you need to talk to when you have ancestors talking to you in your inner visions. So, here we got the Schumann harmonics, and now it turns out that the brainwave key harmonics, alpha, beta, theta, delta, that the actual ratio between the centers of alpha, beta, theta, delta, not only is the ratio 
of the center of, Pete's, of, the, center of the frequencies named alpha, beta, delta in the brain waves. Not only is the ratio between those frequencies golden mean ratio, but also the perfect alpha, beta, delta ratio is the same frequencies as the Schumann harmonics, which are all imploding down to Planck and achieving grounding, literally DNA radio. So, the fun part is, and this is where it gets very simple. You might say, oh, that's too complicated for me. Well, this is where it gets even simpler. Okay? So what Marty proved to me, and he proved it, and I've, I've seen this a hundred times since then, is that when you can make alpha in your brain waves, and you're going to see that in a minute, these are around 8 hertz. If you can make alpha, then when you close your eyes, and relax a minute, and I'm making alpha right now, and uh, when you close your eyes, you see light, and I'm seeing lots of light, because my inner guards are very happy we're doing this. So I'm seeing lot. When I close my eyes, I'm seeing lots and lots of light, and I'm making alpha. And by doing this hundreds of times with hundreds, if not thousands of people around the planet and in 30 years teaching biofeedback, I can tell you something I have checked. And that when you're making alpha, if you close your eyes, you see light. And if you can't make alpha in your brain waves, when you close your eyes, you see dark. <laughs> it ain't complicated. So obviously everybody wants to be making alpha because they want to see light. They don't want the screen to turn off. Very simple. Okay. Now, what, first of all, what is the reason? The physics is that when you make alpha harmonics, you're in training with the Earth and, and the whole intelligence of the collective plasma, called the collective unconscious, but it's literally collective charge. The Holy Ghost, if you like that term, that's really a spirit, and it is a spirit. That's a very correct language. There's some good physics there. So that plasma charge compression, which is the, the intelligence of the Earth itself, Gaia is self-aware, comes to you. So the plasma can light your, light your light bulbs because the plasma is then a shareable wave. So, it's obvious. You can make alpha, you're in training with the earth, and you get lights inside. Cool. Now, what did Marty teach me about addiction? What he taught me was, that this is, this is the most profound experience I've ever had regarding addiction. He taught me that, see, he had designed an expensive system, and now flameandmind.com does almost all of this much, much much cheaper. And that expensive system was, you close your eyes, you work and you make some alpha, and you get these sounds, and you're going to see it in the flame and sound part of audio feedback cues of flame and mind. And you get a little audio cue helping you to make alpha. Okay, very simple. You just listen to that little sound, and every time the sound gets a little bit louder, then you know, oh, I'm doing it. And you, that's called biofeedback. <laughs> that's why they call it feedback. <laughs> so you get the little sound, and you learn to make a little more, a little more alpha. Well, my, and by the way, they also, at that time, they had various other ways to teach out. Like kids would get their Pac-Man game, and Pac-Man would, we do it mostly with sound. But there's lots of ways to teach people to make alpha. And Flame, Flame and Mind does it with sound. Point being, this is, this is the fun part. Marty said, and he's right, he said, on the same day you teach the alcoholic, let's say, beer drinker, how to make alpha, on that same day, the next drink of beer won't taste good. Wow. That's what, that just floored me. I said, you really? No kidding. Why is it that on the day you learn to make some alpha in the brain, on the same day, the next drink of beer doesn't taste good? The re here's, and I've been meditating on that question for 30 years, I'll tell you. It's about <laughs> 20, 30 years I've been meditating on that question. And I think I figured it out, honestly. Okay, here's the simple truth, is that Evolution, communion of saints, bliss, ecstasy, peak experience, all that stuff is simply when your plasma implodes and your aura gets really big, called ecstasy or bliss. It's funny they call it ecstasy, the yes. drug, but actually <laughs> ecstasy is the real thing. Yeah. So when you have an access to any kind of bliss experience, your plasma light bulbs all light up and access to bliss plasma fusion is the restart, recharge of your immune system and your information communion with ancestors. And the only way to get an aura big enough to take it through death. Wow. Okay. So basically, we respect our kids for willing to risk life to get bliss because they're correct. It's life or death. Yes. But now we teach them physics of what bliss is and they don't need the drugs. And the first step to that is to show them how to make alpha. Yes. So if they make alpha, it turns the lights on. So I'm, the reason the beer di drinker didn't want that next drink of beer was because he learned how to turn the lights on himself. 
That's called self-empowerment. So the thing is, um, basically the urge to addiction was a correct urge to get bliss peak experience. Yes. It's a correct urge because your life does depend on it. Your aura does depend on it. That is your life. So that was correct. So addiction was a wrong turn on the right road. Okay? And the road was to bliss. So you respect your kids for wanting access to some kind of bliss experience. They need it. In fact, we've always said, we've had this fun in the Italian church that day when the Catholics finally figured this out, you know, culture is not the color of your shoe polish and your beer and your wine. No, and your, no. Culture is do you have the knowledge to teach your teenagers how to have a bliss experience? Yes. Because that teaches them how to get immortal, how to communicate with ancestors and Every Aboriginal can tell you communication with ancestors is everything. Yes. That's the purpose of life. They know, and they were right, actually, because it's survival radio. We know how communication with ancestors work at sacred space. You have plasma implosion, and you can light up your own inner bulbs, and you make phone calls to ancestors. Yes. And Karatkov measured it. He, he went there where the Kogi telephoned their ancestors and measured the fractality of the air and its charge implosion, which is the physics of sacred space. And by the way, all this bliss process works better in sacred space, obviously. Yes. So everyone's flying around to get on these horrible jet airplanes, which destroys your aura, <laughs> <laughs> flying around because they want to, they want sacred sites and bliss. Meantime, all the sacred sites have been messed up because they put all this metal and destroyed the plasma implosion. So people are wasting their money going on airplanes to look for sacred space when the physics means you can make sacred space if you understand the science. And so the metal ropes they put at Athens and the Acropolis and the, in, in Scotland, they put metal all over the sacred spaces now so the plasma doesn't implode anymore. So anyway, that's another story. <laughs> so the point would be now that if there were to be a next step for the young people you want to help, uh, you know, we're going to show them now a little bit about how a brainwave biofeedback flameandmind.com works. Yes. Actually try it. We're going to put some of the toys. And then we recognize that there's other aspects to this. You recognize that you also then change your diet. And Rebecca here, who's wonderful, who's filming from South Africa, has dedicated a good part of her life already to the gut microbiome and the healthy uh, bacteria of the gut that help you light that same plasma fire. And the same plasma fire is Therify.net that also ignites it. And a large percent of the people who have Therify plasma experiences also have bliss experiences particularly those where we're relaxed. And we understand exactly why, because we're igniting that, come on baby, light my fire, plasma aura. And just as we conclude this first segment, which, which is the introduction, I would like to also mention that uh, multiple Therify.net plasma centers, the rejuvenation centers, which are now in over 20 countries, um, actually are dedicated to addiction solutions. And um, in several of them, the uh, they're using it in conjunction with Iboga for addiction. Okay. And, uh, and the science is very parallel. If, it get, if anybody gets to a peak plasma fusion, the lights really come on, experience, suddenly memories are sorted. That's the other principle. Is If you get this conjugate plasma fusion experience, bliss, a peak bliss experience like Kundalini, sorts. That's what it does. It sorts all waves into phase because the waves that are out of phase cannot be propagated, and therefore it literally sorts for what weights are shareable, which is the physics of pure intention. So there are various ways, in, including Iboga, used with Therify Plasma, which have proven very, very effective. Now, I know that's controversial, and, there's this, and Iboga should be used with a professional. But uh, what I just want to say is we now understand the science of how all these things fit together. You fix the diet. You get your plasma fusion experience. One of our plasma centers is also using a light device. There's various pulse LEDs that create these intense inner bliss fusion experience. So anything that gets the inner plasma to fuse will sort the memories. And when you have access, that switches on DNA radio, ancestral memory. You know, It's basically the fountain of all biologic information. And when that's connected, you don't feel lonely anymore, and you don't feel addicted anymore. So that's the science. But the cheapest and simplest way to do this is a bit of biofeedback, attend to your diet, learn about the hygiene, and do the things that you're already doing. So now next, we're going to actually demonstrate the flameinmind.com biofeedback. 
So I've taken the Muse headset, which is required for Flame in Mind, which comes in this beautiful little box, and it's easier to put on than sunglasses, and then I just wetted the back of the little rubber just a little bit for good connection behind the ears. And if you look at the screen there, see when I sit still here? Can, can you zoom on the screen there, Rebecca? You see, it's under 4% noise, which means my noise level is good. Okay, so now I click on Analyzer. Are you on the screen there? Can you see it okay? Brain waves. Now the sound's on. Start. Okay, so there you're seeing my brain waves. Okay, now, see, when I'm moving around, it's mostly noise, okay? So they just kind of see my face. So watch, watch what I'm doing now. So now I'm just going to get ready, getting very peaceful. Okay. Actually, you know, I forgot one thing. I'm going to put the record function on. So let me just show you how that works. I want to go up to the screen again for a second. If I go over here to record. Oops. Okay. I guess we won't worry about that at the moment because we actually have... Uh, oh, yeah. That, this is, so I just, I just put my name then on the recording. And, and now it's recording. Okay. So, <clears throat> but we're recording the camera anyway, so it's fine. So... So now I'm sitting still, and I have reasonable data here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close my eyes, and I'm going to imagine light inside my head. And so then you can just uh, zoom in on the screen behind me, Rebecca, and see what you see. See if you see some alpha. Here it goes. Closing my eyes. Ah, <sighs> breath out, relax. I just had a pretty intense bliss experience, guys. I had light inside my head, and lights were going off, and flashes, and cool stuff. Okay, so now let's pause a second and take a look at what we got, okay? Okay, so now we're actually, well, I hit playback on the recording we just made, and then I just made this little adjustment to the game, because when we first made the recording, the, the alpha uh, theta was off, off the screen. See how that's off the screen? The amplitude is too high. So I just click the plus and minus buttons to adjust the gain slightly. And that's about the right amount of gain. So that, you see that green line there at 7.2 hertz? That's alpha. And you see the right and left side have relatively the same amplitude, although the right side is a little bit higher. So at that moment, my right brain was a little stronger than my left brain, actually. But you see that my right and left alpha in green there at 7 hertz was balanced. So now we kind of just step through this a little bit. Yeah, it's okay. So here, this, this is the main experience here, right here. So we're at uh, 18 seconds into the recording here. So the alpha is, is fairly, fairly strong there, but it's not very stable, and it's true. We were... Um, having lots of conversation there. But let me just see if I can find a better part here. That's pretty good, actually. So um, the white lines up and down are my front brain, and the black lines up and down are my, I'm sorry, white lines up and down are my rear brain, which needs to be dominant for in the flow. And the black lines up and down are my front brain, which you see on the bottom right, we have a little bit of noise. But if I just back this up a little bit, you can actually see What's being indicated here, uh, there's an option to turn it on to uh, see the um, ratio between those peaks, whether they're octave or golden ratio, the phi and blue are octave, etc. So there's lots of powerful options in this screen, but for the moment, um, just there's wonderful examples of bliss at flameandmind.com where you see that alpha beta. And um, the option here, just to show you right here, is where you turn on alpha sounds. You see it's alpha sounds not available because this is playback mode. But that's where you click alpha sounds in the settings. And these are your display options where it show alpha phi ratio and show alpha octave ratio. So the settings allow you to display those ratios and to playback those sounds. 
So that's just an introduction. There really are so many powerful options in flameandmind.com. We're not going to try to explain them all here. They're all help files at the website, etc. But the Flame and Mind helps you generate those audio sounds. Remember, the audio feedback cues that you get are only helpful to you, not other people. So playing them here won't really do very much. And also, they're only really powerful if you're hearing them in headphones. Remember, binaural beats, by definition, are sounds heard in headphones where the heterodyne cascade interference of the audio phonon is inside the liquids inside your head. And therefore, they actually trigger the same pressure wave interferometry phonon, which is bliss itself. Which is why binaural beat sounds can be so powerful and helpful and bliss inducing. And that's why we call it flame and sound. Okay, so now we're going to take a pause and we're going to switch and we're going to try Cezanne. <laughs> okay. Just, we just very carefully put the very simple, easier to put on than sunglasses, Muse headset, used with flame in mind on Cezanne. We put a, just a little bit of water moisture so that the front electrodes are nice, cleanly touching his forehead. And on the back, the little rubber thing is touching directly on his ears. And you can see on the screen now, if we're zooming on the screen on the top right there, that we're, we're getting like less than 5% noise, which is very good. It means we've got a clean signal. We can have a little fun here. So I'm clicking on brain waves. Alpha sounds start, and this is Cezanne's brainwaves right here. Okay, so Cezanne, don't do anything yet. Just sort of notice what we're talking. So you see, in here, in green is your alpha. Okay, and um, actually, with me, you could actually see uh, the, on the top that red line is actually the raw data. And with me, when the, when the alpha, when the theta and delta was really strong, you could actually even see it in the raw data. But anyway. And by the way, the, on the bottom, it can actually show the right versus left hemisphere phase relationship for that 180 degrees out of phase, which actually conjugates. But that's advanced stuff. Let's do the simple stuff, fun stuff here now. Okay, so yeah, so now you see that when, uh, when Cezanne moved his head, you see what happened to the data? It went all over the place. <laughs> so it's only stillness that really does it, but that's okay. So now uh, just get really comfortable, and you're very still here, you're very still, and you're comfortable. Just close your eyes for a minute. Don't meditate, you just close your eyes. That's right. So he just closed his eyes. Did you see we had a flash of that alpha in green there already? Actually, look at that, Cezanne. You're making... Look at that! He's got some alpha in there. Doing good. Okay. Wonderful. So, yeah, just meditate a little bit now. Here. Wow. Oh, look! Folks, we have a bingo. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Actually, Cezanne can make alpha. <laughs> Wow, I think he's had some bliss in his life. See how beautiful that green bar is? Wow. Okay, I'm just going to turn the record on here. Say that. Okay. Okay, just get still messy just a little bit more. Quite good. Okay, beautiful. Come back, sir. Well, I changed my tune here. Cezanne has corrected me. He can, in fact, make alpha. I wonder how that happened. <laughs> Have you been doing some meditating? Oh, uh, yes, yes. I yes. see. Well, I'm quite impressed, actually, sir. Most people can't do that on the first <laughs> try. Yeah, you're going to be congratulated, I think. Okay, so that was fun. So now we're going to hit play on the gizmo here. I go back to the main menu and hit... Uh, Playback a record, and it says I'm turning off the sensor, which means you can take off the headset if you want okay. to. Okay. And now we're going to hit playback a record start. Uh, and turn it off. Yeah, that you just hold that little button there now just for a second. Good. And now we hit play. We select the file. Playback, save on. C E Z. Yes, play. Okay, and now hit click through. Look at that. I'm really quite impressed, sir, that you okay, that's a too fast playback. But see, look at this. Look at this, guys. So actually, uh, Cezanne is making a goodly amount of alpha. So let me ask you a simple question. When you closed your eyes at that point, did you see some light or was it dark? Uh, it was uh, a visualization. Yeah. yeah. So you were seeing light. some light. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 I actually could feel the energy coming from you when you did that. Okay. And would you say that you got to that place where you, because your, your brainwaves are actually impressive compared to a lot of people I've seen. Um, would you say you got to that place as a result of pain, or as your work with meditation, or? 
uh, after uh, my experience uh, yeah. with uh, the out of body experience, mm -hmm. um, I got to just you know, follow the path that I I've, uh, I've listened, been listening to my ancestors, mm -hmm. and since then I'm just uh, meditating and start eating uh, vegan uh, mm -hmm. with. Uh, a whole uh, vision behind it so uh, with the harmony of plants animals and everything that's connected to each other so uh, mm -hmm. and sort of live in nature sometimes here you want yes. to say community yes. And yes. so all these places where charges go because what I would have to say is that Cezanne is actually um, has actually reached something in his brain waves which indicates that he has a taste of bliss in a sustainable way which is beautiful but you see, unfortunately, most people who have not meditated, who have not changed their diet, you don't see that kind of brainwave coherence. So this, the brainwave coherence is a powerful tool and very useful, and flameandmind.com is not that expensive. However, it's also true that uh, the other things that you're doing, particularly around the diet and the hygiene, and what Rebecca teaches here about getting the right microbiome, the right uh, enzymes in your guts is so critical, which basically means eat live food, eat raw food, and really cut down on that, that prepared food where all the enzymes are dead. Because a live enzyme is a plasma imploder, actually. So, in summary, what have we said so far? We have said that there is a way to give young people a taste of what can be a way out yes. of yes. Their, pain, their pain. Yes. So what are you going to do next? Um, I'm wanting to start a community. Uh, at Serra Longa uh, for uh, people to come there who, have, who are now in a phase of their life to, uh, that they don't know what to do. They're in a, a, a whale, like I was in. And I want them to know that there's a solution. Uh, for me, there was a solution, and maybe they can try and see if it works on them. Mm -hmm. So what we're really saying is that it's very possible to prepare the kind of environment where young people or anyone with a problem with addiction has several tools available. They have biofeedback tools like yes. SimonMind.com, but they also have someone like Rebecca that teaches how to get your gut microbiome recharged. Yes. And things like, of course, Therify and Plasma are very helpful, but not essential, but very helpful. And a um, place where you have access to nature and bliss and yes. charge. And where you actually do some work with young people to have them see through that pain yes. that you saw through so well. Yes. So we re-emphasize here, folks, that, that the overwhelming tide of addiction on this planet can be addressed. We understand the science well enough now that we can provide the tools that people can turn a corner. Because we can understand that people who were looking for some form of bliss turn to addiction only because they didn't know the right road <laughs> on yes. the wrong path. The right, no, the wrong path on the right, right turn, yeah. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> But the right path is simple, something that grows your aura in a sustainable way, yes. which is literally your vitality and your charge. Yes. So, thank you for, very much, everyone, from the Flame and Mind team, and we thank Cezanne, and we thank Rebecca, and we hope to see you very soon. Stay in touch. Thank you.